Welcome to the Automators Podcast with your host, Jackie Stook and Joe Glines. Hey everyone, today we're going to cover the pros and cons of obfuscating versus compiling your code. Yeah, yeah, this is going to be a great one. Hey everyone, it's Joe Glines out of Dallas, Texas. Yeah, and Jackie here from Copenhagen, Denmark. And today we're talking about the pros and cons of obfuscating versus compiling your code. And uh, let, let's take a step back here. And this, the reason why I think it's a really interesting topic, but someone had written me asking if I could help them submit their code to Virus Total. Actually, do, do we want to go there? Let's let's go there real quickly. I, we hadn't talked about this, but let me bring up a website just because if you're not aware of it, it is a it is an interesting site. Yeah. And you were a little more, you were, I shouldn't say a little, you actually were familiar with this and I, I wasn't. Virus Total, it's owned by Google, is that right? I do believe so. I, I, if, I at least heard it was at some point. So yeah, I, I still believe that's the case. And you can, uh, you can come in and you can, you can actually put in the URL. I right, will, we'll check, uh, automator. Hopefully it comes up a zero. Oh, good. Zero. Great. Uh, but you can, look at domains, or you can look at uh, executables, you know, or files, I should say. Yeah, interesting here, when we're looking at the automator, you actually yeah. had two community uh, comments, it seems. Yeah, it's it's me. Yeah, <laughs> that's and that's fine. Yeah, I went in after I'm like, oh, yeah, but you're right, here's the community. Um, I don't know how, how it says two, I, I guess maybe it, I, I don't know. But yeah, maybe there's one you are not seeing. Right. But you can uh, you can comment. So I went into uh, Auto Hotkey and commented there uh, in to QAP. I did a few other people that I know. I'm like, hey, you know what? Why not? But you can you can give it a, like a thumbs up, right? So that way other people will feel a little better. And maybe Google uses that to some degree. If a lot of people <laughs> give it a thumbs up. Uh, but yeah, so. <laughs> You can use it to review websites, but you, what's really cool is you can you can review files. So let's. I don't know if I, how do I get back to the. That's why I was going here. So anyway, you can select a file and then choose a file and then upload the file, and it will review it. Uh, and and what was happening to a client of mine was their compiled script was getting flagged with having you know thirty viruses. And now actually, before we keep going down this route. Jackie, tell me a little bit about, because what you had suggested was something very interesting. The different versions of AutoHotKey? Yeah, yeah. I I have had a lot of different executables that I've either just sent to people or sold or ones that I've received from other people. Um, and I've used Virus Total quite a few times just to um, see both what people would get from my files, but also what other people files uh, said. And for some reason, um, when reading about it in the Cube community, there was a difference in the version of AutoHotKey the script was compiled with. And why that is exactly, I don't know, but apparently small bits and pieces inside the um, compiled uh, bin files of our hotkey uh, resembles other pieces of uh, viruses, codes, trojans, whatever. So not because they actually contain them, but because the virus scanners uh, sees patterns that it um, associates with these known um, bad players. So it might be because other people have used our hard key for bad things, or it might just be because, oh, we're using the same functionality to do, who knows, image search or whatever it might be. Well, when yeah. I, sorry to interrupt you, but I had talked to Tank a little bit about this. And one thing he said also was, you know, the more Google sees people using it and not reporting viruses, so it's also... If, if there's a certain version of AutoHockey where a lot of people are using that version and no one's reported issues, that also weighs into, you know, and it doesn't have to be AutoHockey, right? It's whatever executable you, you're working with. So, uh, yeah, that, that factors in as well. Yeah, but it, it's always sad to compile your script and, and see it being flagged as, I don't know, 16 different thingies. Right. And I've, I've, 
try to always say, um, there's of course different things you can say, but one of the things I usually focus on is if no explicatives, Jackie, no explicatives. <laughs> if, if these uh, different scanners ain't finding the same thing, yeah, it's probably a false negative. Right? It, it's Interesting. Yeah, yeah. most likely if, if, if one is finding a Trojan and another one is finding a virus and this one is finding a different type of key logger and this one is finding who knows whatever types and uh, it's always been the case in, in the situations I've had. They've found there's maybe 72 that are scanning it and, and 58 of them are saying it's clean. And the rest of them are like, oh, it's this, it's this, it's, they're all over the place. And I don't know if I've actually been able to use it as something that people <laughs> would then go for, but yeah. To me, it, it just should be pretty clear that if they ain't even consistent with what they're seeing, they're mo most likely seeing something that's not there. Yep. So let's let's continue on with with so we can get back. I mean, we're on topic. Don't get me wrong, but yeah. just to further along. Uh, so what this client of mine had said he wanted to do was, I mean, he was first he was trying to compile his script. And then put it through virus total, but it was getting flagged. And and I know, and you and I talked about this a, like a year ago with the automator. I was putting up executables, and I noticed the automator was getting flagged as a virus distribution center, you know, and, and being unsafe. So that was why I said, you know what, I, I'm not going to distribute executables anymore. I'm just going to give the source code and auto hotkey code and let people install auto hotkey and download it and do the stuff. And yeah, but that makes a lot of sense for for your case because you're a part of the AutoHotKey community. But if people are really making right. full pieces of software that they might not even wish right. for people to know if it comes from AutoHotKey per se, they just want to be equal to every other uh, software product out there. Um, and not be associated with our hotkey or, or look down on because it's our hotkey or whatever part of it it might be. Right. Yeah, I mean, especially we know auto hotkey is super simple to compile, but imagine if we were using like Python or some other language where it can really be a pain in the butt, you know? So you're going to ask someone who's not a Python programmer to download Python and figure out how to compile your program in order to get it working. Like that's a big ask. With AutoHotKey, it's it's very simple, but uh, yeah, with with other languages, not so easy. Uh, and in this case, the client was actually he's selling his software, so not only is he you know creating software for non AutoHotKey users, but he's selling the the program. But his idea was, I thought it was really interesting, was to give me the source code and have me and I actually had Mace Rift do this with me just because he's a better you know programmer. We read through his code, and then he had us used Feiyu's script to obfuscate it, which basically, you know, kind of, we'll call it blurring for lack of a better term, right? Makes it hard to follow. And uh, and then um, we, I actually made a video, but he's distributing that obfuscated auto hotkey code, which means people, it won't be so easy for them to hack, right? To, to, to get dig into and to, you know, mess with the licensing or to, to get it for free and recirculate it and stuff. So it doesn't foolproof it, but it, it was an interesting idea of an approach, I thought. Yeah, yeah, I'd say it, it is, it truly is, because a lot of people are trying all kinds of stuff. Some users sadly believe that just compiling it in the, the normal method that our hotkey does it, and we call it compiling, and it's only actually packing um, yeah. our script together with the, the hotkey bin file or exit file, whichever method they actually use, and then when you double click it, it knows which action to take, and that is to execute the packed uh, script with the auto hotkey exit. And that's why the executables are so large, is because, oh, you have your script and you have all about a hotkey, and those two are just packed together, and no real compilation actually happens. So your script is fully visible in the exit resources. And that's of course not 
very secure if you're trying to protect your intellectual yeah. property. It, property. And there are some things you can do to help obfuscate it from that, right? The impress yeah. and what's the other one? There's another one, IPX, something like that? Uh, IPX or UPX or something. Maybe yeah. UPX, okay. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, using Auto Hockey H. Anyway, I did a video on walking through this. Uh, it, it, there are ways to really make it much more difficult, but we all, you know, you and I both have talked about this a lot. No matter what you do, it, someone can hack it. Someone who really knows what they're doing can can figure it out. Yeah, and and uh, some of the things that I found out in CUNY is there is truly a big difference when you upload it to Virus Tool, mm -hmm. how many hits you get depending on if you're using version one one. 26 one or 1127 two or 1130 31 or whatever it might be from one version to another you can go from 32 hits to six hits and you haven't changed your script whatsoever so so yeah compiling is kind of a um, wild west kind of situation where <laughs> you're still giving people exactly the same thing. Maybe you have modified it a little bit and, and changed the version number, but because our hotkey, the, the, the main thing actually updated in the meantime, you're now being flagged on people's systems. And that's very <laughs> unfortunate. Whereas with the other model of actually using an obfuscated script instead, you might be able to completely um, negate this issue of, of being flagged. Because if people have installed our hotkey themselves, they probably trust uh, the source they got that from. And that will be whatever version they're now running. And if they updated it, they did that in that process. And your script is now on its own. And is, it isn't being flagged as anything because it's just a plain text file. It isn't dangerous in that sense. People might still be um, ver ver weary of it, yeah. Um, yeah. But, weary. Yeah. but there <laughs> would be very hard to actually pack in any type of virus type content in there. Uh, but yeah, and that's why he then made the method that you uh, <laughs> said here, Joe, make someone else review your code, make like uh, a hash value that you... Right, that, that's what I, I should have mentioned, yeah, was yeah. was I uploaded it, I did a video uploading it, showing the hash value and said, this is what, you know, the file I loaded, and that way, when the person goes to do it themselves... Because otherwise, if I didn't do that, that, he still could have faked everything, right? But by seeing that hash value, and so I, I wasn't overly, you know, I understand the concept, but that hashed value takes a look at every byte, correct? And and says, looks at it and says, okay, here's this unique ID. And if I went and changed one, you know, little thing in that script, it'd come up with a different hash value. Is that correct? Yeah. And, and let me ask you one more on this. There was like the HD, I think like 265 and is it 65 or five? There's another one that's, um, there were like three that I've heard, of, you know, referenced a lot. Um, they're just different encoders for lack of a better term. Yeah. Okay. And the 265 is a higher encryption like level. Is it? That's yeah, a good way of putting it. Yeah. Okay. Harder to crack, harder to, yeah. But even in the lower ones, I mean, they're so sorry. Um, so yeah, so I thought that was a really interesting thing. Now, back onto the negative, even though this has a lot of, it's got some good positives. You, you circumvent the whole virus thing, I think, in a, in a big way. However, you know, it's kind of ironic, right? Is you, especially because he's selling this, he's obfuscated his code. And the beautiful thing about, at least with Auto Hockey's case, it's so easy to read. Anybody can read it and they're like, oh, I know, I, I know what it's doing. But the fact that is it's obfuscated, uh, it makes it much harder to follow and read. And so then the people get the code, and again they're back to now they're trusting me and the and the you know the main developer, right? Of like I saw it before we obfuscated it. It was much easier to read. Trust me, it was a big difference. Uh, but it they have no clue of what it's doing. But uh, you know I think for the most part most people just 
they don't anyway, right? So um, they don't anyway, and and that's a lot of um, the idea with Arhat Key or or maybe also other scripting languages and other not uh, hard compiled in that manner. Um, the security of them, if you're trying to just keep uh, all the script kitties out or whatever you'd call the different types of, of people who would try to get in and remove your licensing code or whatever mm-hmm. it might be. <sighs> With a language like this, it's very, very hard. There, there's almost no software out there that, that's truly safe. Uh, so it's a matter of how much ever do you want to put in there compared to how much can you lose and so on and so forth. And we have covered that multiple times before, but obfuscating it only obfuscates the parts that are obfuscatable and command names and and different other things like that would still need to be named uh, readable. Yeah, their and, program, their actual specific name. Otherwise, auto hockey couldn't interpret it properly, right? That's yeah, yeah, and that's the thing because you can't build any type of um, D of your skater into it because then you would then be in the same first issue of you giving them a compiled version or something packed without a hotkey and stuff like that. So, so if obfuscation is supposed to work to remove the virus issue it needs to work out the box as a plain text file Mm -hmm. and that's probably where it becomes a little bit harder to do in a way that truly obfuscates your code i'm not saying it can't be done but yeah no, yeah. Uh, I mean, that was the other thing I was going to say is a big negative. Uh, and, and again, we, we both know the vast majority of people, anyone who's good enough to do this, the, especially because the stuff we're doing probably doesn't cost a lot, right? They're just going to pay it anyway. Uh, um, it's, unless they're going to try to steal it and then sell it, you know, that's another thing. But what I was going to say was with, when you compile your script and you can rename that executable to whatever you want, they don't necessarily know what language it's written in. Right, which on its own is a great advantage. Now, when you say, "Here's your auto hotkey," you know, script I wrote, go get the program. You're tipping your hand. It's a big like, "Aha!" Now I know it's auto hotkey, right? It's if so, and, and I have um, the source code as long as I can work with it. Exactly, I know that the um, hotkey it when we were going through the the H one back in the day. Uh, said uh, similar things because it's it's an open source language or or interpreter. Um, it it it's almost impossible to, to to really close it down because if if you have access to the the parts that are interpreting your script, um, we we have seen one of the more powerful methods that I'm not sure how well works though, but the um, what was it? The payload method, I think it was called. Yeah, that existed for years and years, where it would actually load in a piece of uh, um, Dell or whatever it was into the the the, um, uh, the interpreting process. And as soon as our hotkey had interpreted the script, had read the payload, um, the the intermediary would also know it and it was almost impossible to get around i know that methods has been made since that that can get around that specific one but only because that method hasn't been reviewed or or what's the right term updated since only because it's like eight years old or something like that if someone actually tried to do a new way of interpreting the scripts with a similar method, it might still work just fine. I just thought of one other advantage of the uh, obfuscation and virus total method over the executable method. Even though, let's say, you know, your for clientele is at a company and you can't install programs willy nilly, like everywhere, right? At least if you gave them a program that was auto hockey to see, it might be known already and, and, something that they're familiar with and just flat out let you install it. But if you 
create your own, you know, script and put it, you know, compiled. Boy, getting that passed, especially if it comes up with a virus. And that was the other one I've had clients where uh, I go, I, I would be in Dropbox and I'd put it in the folder and they go, oh, there it is. And then they would go and it would disappear. And like within a second, every time their antivirus was, was deleting it as fast as I could put it there. And even though they were trying to whitelist it, it and I finally I said, you know what? Because they were admins. I'm like, let's just install auto hotkey. I'll give you the, you know, the syntax instead of the script. And it was so much easier. But yeah, that was stupid how painful that yeah. was. Yeah. And that's that's also where uh, auto hotkey portability, of course, comes into play. That um, if you just have uh, the auto hotkey executable or the bin files, you can do a lot by just having a script. And yeah. then if the script is obfuscated, then the seller is doing his best to protect his intellectual property and people can still use it uh, without uh, actually installing anything. So, yeah. You know, Jackie, that's a really good point, especially it's a, it's a, it's an auto hotkey point, right? Because boy, like I said, I've, I've only tried to, uh, can create executables in Python is the only other language I've tried. Maybe I did VBS, you know, an eon ago, but it wasn't easy. Like creating those py- executables is just, it sucks. And, uh, with auto hotkey, you're right. Even if you can't even install auto hotkey, you just have the executable, you just drag it on there. How hard is that? I mean, that's pretty easy for anyone to do, even though it's a quote unquote, a big ask for people who aren't technical. Um, yeah. it's nothing compared to other languages. So yeah, it's, Big selling point for auto hotkey. Yeah, and I do know that Feiyu, as you mentioned, has made strides in to to the obfuscation and the, the um, protection of code with, with quite a few method, me- methods, and you can find most of them on the auto hotkey forum. So yeah. Awesome. Well, that was a uh, interesting. Hopefully, people we didn't go through it, you know, bullet point like we've been doing lately. But I think we discussed the topic pretty well to explain. Uh, there's pros and cons to both. And um, the only other one that I'll throw out there is that I had come up with was, well, what if I created an executable and it doesn't get around the virus problem, but it gets around the problem of hosting it? Is what if I put it in Dropbox and then just link to it, you know, from not from my actual domain, and that way. I protect my website, uh, but yeah. And I know from talking to Jean, he, he has a way to, do you remember how he says it? Uh, he gets, uh, what is it called? A lot of license, but it's a certificate. Yeah, certificate. Yeah. Yeah. I've also seen a few of the methods of, um, getting a, a file installer. So actually take care of a few different parts of this and, uh, and there's been a few different attempts of, of making a script, uh, self, uh, execute on our hotkey exit. Mm, okay. Yep. So, so uh, I, I'm not exactly sure what the status of that is, but where you actually do keep the two separate all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and the script itself takes care of actually being executed by our hotkeys without packing them together. But yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks for uh, hanging out. And uh, if you guys have different approaches and how you circumvent some of the stuff, please add in the comments here. Cause I'd love to hear it. Yeah, me too. Absolutely. All right, cheers. Yeah. Bye.